Hey everybody, welcome to another Squad Ops One Life-ish event. We're doing something a little different tonight. We are actually doing the Showdown in the Samari. This is a little bit of a different event. We are running regulars versus staff. So we're going to see, ultimately, who are the best guys with ops tags out here. The event was cooked up by Jack Reynolds, something a little different, pretty fun. I'm excited to see how it goes out. But tonight you're going to be listening to me, CMYK Matter, representing the staff. And on the other side, we're actually got a, a special reg as a guest here. Agalock, how's it going, man? It's going all right. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> you're a little bit nervous. This is his first time actually casting with us. This is his first time talking with us. So a little nervous, a little bit nervous on his commentary. You, you're going to be okay? You're not going to pass out yeah, on me? I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I want to rep these guys. They've treated me good, so. <laughs> it's important good, their perspectives good, are. Yeah. Yeah, we want to make sure that everybody has their opportunity to see something cool, have a good time. So this operation is a little different. What's going to be happening, we'll set up the stage here a little bit. The U.S. have a hostage that gets to be placed somewhere that the INS want. The INS are going to be played by staff this time around. So the INS can place this hostage anywhere that they want. The hostage is going to be played by Hyper Evo tonight, actually. Just checking my notes. He's played by Hyper Evo tonight. So he will be placed somewhere in this compound, it looks like. And the INS will have to defend them. The U.S. have four spots, basically, that they can check on this map for their hostage. They're going to push in, try to get their hostage, and then extract him to an exfil location on the southwest side of the map. Now, the reason why I said one life-ish events earlier, normally we only allow one life. No matter what happens, you die, you're dead, and that's all you get to do. But in this one, we have a little special measure. Whenever the staff go down, after the hostage is rescued and moved to the exfil location... Staff are allowed to respawn at INS Main, and then they are allowed to push on the exfil location to try to take some guys down that way. So they get two lives. The regulars only get one. And the reason that that worked out that way, if you look here, we've got 19 players versus 33. A lot more regulars than staff, so we're giving the staff a second chance at it. Should be pretty cool. Should be pretty cool. I'm excited. All right, though, before we get started... The brainchild of this entire thing, the guy who cooked this up and made it all possible, Jack Reynolds, one of our regulars, awesome dude, also one of our trainees. He's in the process of getting to be a SOT staff. That'll be pretty exciting for him. We actually got him in the channel. What's up, Jack? Hey, guys. How's it going? Going well, man. Agalock, you going, you going good over there? You haven't passed out yet? I'm absolutely perfect. <laughs> so jack i gotta ask where did the idea for this come from did you just cook it up one night or was there something that kind of triggered this were you talking to people and just got it where did this come from yeah actually like the backstory behind this is um i had been creating just regular docs for operations that anyone you would see on a wednesday or saturday night and uh the guy in charge of it hammering hutch awesome dude told me that he would like me to look into creating docs for regulars that is to like kind of show off the SOTT principles we teach here. Very and cool. I I went into thinking like what kind of ops don't we really have? We have a bunch of checkpoint ops, a bunch of attack and defense, and I thought I haven't seen like a real hostage mission yet. Yeah, you know, we have a few escort ones. We got we've got fish hook, which involves kind of retrieving a couple guys, but no real like single hostage rescue kind of situation. So this is something totally new in that aspect. I, I'm pretty excited to see how that goes down. So you've been with Squad Ops not that long, actually. You started in when? About March? Officially, yeah, about start of March, end of April. Very cool. And you're training to be SOTT staff, right? Yeah, got to teach the newbies, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. I, I like to see people trying to get involved and wanting to become more of a contributor to the community though obviously our regulars do a great job as well so as far as this event tonight what's your favorite aspect of it is there something that you're really proud of in the writing of it 
I tried to make it as unique as possible while keeping it true to a One Life event. So there's going to be some specialty rules that all you viewers get to see tonight, and I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, the the respawn that INS get, that's obviously a huge outlier to our normal events. What was the thought process behind that? I think I know, but I want to hear it from you. Um, so the only disadvantage right now in a hostage rescue mission is he's going to be on your map. The hostage is going to be on my map. I'm going to know exactly where he is at all times. Mm -hmm. So my thought process in trying to balance the operation is just give the INS a respawn. Once we have the hostage, they get to come out in full force again. Very cool. And they get to push on that exfil location then. Absolutely. I, I didn't want them to camp it, so when I was creating the operation, I specifically said that we don't want the INS to wait for them there. We want them to be coming, like, charging out after. Like a cin it's going to be cinematic. You were looking for that cinematic angle. That's what you were hoping for, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. Well, I mean, I know you've been working on some of the trailers for the ops that we've been putting together. You're also a, a trainee member of the content creation team at this point. And I know for you, the cinematic, the crazy moments are a big, important thing. So I love to see that. It's awesome. Are you are you thinking you guys are going to come out on top tonight? Do you, do you think you have it locked down? Oh, for sure, man. Staff are going down. There's no chance. There's no chance staff are going down. And if That's I'm correct, I, I hear there's a, uh, a bounty on my head specifically. There's a, yeah. a rumor I've yeah. heard. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple of rumblings in... Uh, in staff chat, actually, of there being a bounty on your head. If somebody manages to kill Jack Reynolds and has it with proof on stream, I believe that there's a, a game uh, in, in the play for them, just some sort of game from somebody's library. I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but they're definitely going to be looking to take you down if they can. It's <laughs> exciting. They can try. They're going to need a lot more than whatever's on their team right now. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got me flying around in the air above. There's been some friendly friendly smack talk between the, the staff and the regs the last couple of days. You know, everybody just trying to get their little jabs in here and there. It's been really entertaining. I think that this event is a great thing, and I'm really happy that you brought it to us. I'm excited to see how it turns out. So thank you, Jack. I really appreciate all the work and, and the effort that went into it. Absolutely. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are here to watch us kick some butt. Yeah, man. Any uh, any last mo or any last statements before we send you back to your plebeian team? <laughs> Mark my words, regs are gonna throw the staff right here, guys. Have good, have fun watching everyone. <laughs> good luck, man. Good luck. <laughs> so that that was Jack Reynolds. He's the guy that actually created this event. He was the one who brainchilded this whole thing, and and you know, for him, this is kind of everything that he's been pouring effort into for a while so it's been a lot of work and we're really appreciate it, re, uh, appreciative to him for all of the stuff that he's done so awesome but now it's just back to me and agalock how's it going agalock you still I'm good? doing all right and i'd like to uh add on to your point there that, about jack you know he's he's a he's a very hard worker you know he's a, he's a good yeah. guy i like him yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. So, what's the what are the U.S. up to? Do you think that they they have a plan down the regs? Do they think do we think that they have something planned up? I would not be. I wouldn't bet on it. No, I think they're gonna kind of go in there <laughs> blind. Not really know what they're doing. It seems like their style. Well, you know the the regs are the regs are going to have a bit of a hard time getting things organized i think at the start but we'll see they they got the numbers and they definitely have in my opinion the u.s has a bit stronger in the ways of kits but then again cqb tends to negate that a lot so absolutely absolutely yeah the ins cqb is very good so let's go ahead and take a moment to go over the kits that we have for each team here for the u.s per squad they get Two ARs, one LAT, one grenade launcher, and one medic, and also something a little specialized. We normally don't allow this in operations, but they get themselves one marksman per the entire team. Usually we do not allow any optics in any of our ops, but this time 
they are allowed one set of optics, that marksman. So we'll see how that goes. Now back on the other side, the INS, they get to kit themselves out with two ARs, one scout, one lat, and one medic per squad. So those guys get some scouts, and that means IEDs. And IEDs mean lots of big booms. I love watching to see how the IEDs and the mines play out on these maps. That's personally one of my favorite things. I love seeing how they work. I get so excited whenever somebody drops an IED and, and people are walking close to it. I'm like, is he going to touch it off? What's going to happen? <laughs> All right, looks like we're going to be getting ready here. I think we're going to be kicking off soon. Let me go ahead and let them know. All right. So, no so, matter, let me ask you something. Yeah, go for it, what, man. What part do you think will the marksman play? Do you think he's going to be a, a defining force against your staff? You know, the marksman, I don't know how it's going to play out simply because this is something that's so different to this operation. We don't normally allow marksmen in any of our operations. We don't allow any optics, really. So personally, for me, this is going to be something kind of interesting and different to see how that plays out. The marksman kit itself is strong in some ways. Like, you get, obviously, those good taps that'll put somebody at bleeding very early. And you get the four times optics, obviously, which are very strong as well. But you are ultimately limited with the amount of ammo that you have, as well as the effectiveness that you have at close range. So if they are able to use that marksman effectively, keep him at range and put in some good shots, then he's going to have an absolutely great time. He's going to put in a lot of shots and, and have a good time. Now, if they get him into a close quarters engagement, though, obviously that marksman's not going to be doing much. And one other thing to consider, if we look around Samari tonight, the Samari map itself looks like they had a dust storm earlier today or something like that. And definitely limits the visibility that you have with a marksman. Also, the staff have chosen this kind of upper point here. It sits high on the map, so the marksman is not going to have many places to get great visibility on it. It could be very strong, or ultimately it could end up very weak. It'll depend on who's playing it and how well they're playing it. Who is playing it? Do we know? Uh, yes, it's part-time Ninja Turtle playing it. Oh, part-time Ninja Turtle. But right. like you said, all it takes is one wrong turn down a dark alley, and that <laughs> doesn't help you very much. Yeah, we're getting ready to go live here shortly. I'm excited. Looks like everybody's just kind of breaking out, getting themselves into place here. Does it look like we're going to have a briefing on the other side at all, Agalock? At the moment, not. Uh, doesn't really look like it. They are, for the most part, gathered in one spot but it, there are two squads that are uh, off to the side there as you can see Brissinger and Eliander and Jack over here with his most trusted men <laughs> uh, but no it seems like they're just uh, hanging out for the time being we'll see how that goes for them and I just realized my view of the chats that we have is not having a good time so let me see about fixing that one moment and i will get back to you guys one second here make sure your body parts aren't sticking out of a building yeah, just come trying to find any elevation or aesthetic case where you can use your vitals. You should tell Barton that, that nobody on the other team can see admin chat. Really? Uh, hyper can. Hyper. Hyper can see oh, yeah. All right, so you're getting a look at Jay Remick there. Got my chat back up so I can see all your wonderful faces and your screen names, okay, actually. Okay. But hey. Fucking ID. 
All right. What, what you can see mean? the staff here getting themselves into position. I'm dying. It looks like for command elements for staff, oh, I we're actually looking at command being run by Barton this time around. Very exciting to see him in command. I'm excited to see that, see how that goes. And we also have Dr. Kamikaze and Jaffe for their squad leads under him. What about on the other side? Who's the command? Who are the who are the uh, squad leads? It's a, it doesn't seem like they're as organized as the other team. Um, they have a couple of small squads dedicated to just QRF and sniping. Um, I'm assuming Jack is in charge considering the nature of the event and that he's the leader for squad one. Uh, I'm assuming he's the one to put eyes on tonight. All right, we'll see how he does. Hopefully he does well. Zokalar, you're saying one day. I'm assuming that means one day you're going to be a reg. I hope so, man. Stick around, have fun, enjoy the operations, enjoy the people, and you'll definitely make it. Just takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of effort, but it's ultimately worth it. Agalock, you were around for quite a while before you got reg, weren't you? Yeah, I've you. been around since January. Um, I'd like to take time to say it does look like U.S. is uh, starting to gather for a impromptu briefing. All right. If they get themselves together, let's go ahead and get you down close to them, and we'll see if we can listen in on their briefing. Tom, yeah. What? All right, so the hostage is not so hidden. We can see Hyper Evo up there. That's one of the spots. So we're assuming they're starting there. Um, they have to start. So the, yeah, so the plan is squads one and three, our two full squads, are going to form a section. They're going to be moving direct south, crossing at checkpoint. Check your map. Oh, thank you. And generally moving south that way. In theory, you're never going to be crossing that southern MSR until you get between and INS hideout. The reason is Squad 6, Big Yes's squad, is going to be trying to push up to these heights north of Compound. Oop, let's use a different mark. They're going to be the distraction element. I want six men to look like 60. Oh, God. And your job is not to, assight those, not to assault those heights. Your job is to get in the high point overlooking the compound. And just generally cause trouble. I want six men to look like 60, like I said. If you have to engage them on those buildings, on those rooftops in uh, whatever that point's called, or in market somewhere else in Bravo 2, in police station, I don't care. Just as soon as you hit contact, you act like you're 60 men, not six. That's the main thing. Don't risk your lives doing it, though, if you can help it. Yeah, squad. Constantly retreating and falling back under fire. Exactly. Squad 5 is the scout sniper team. They're going to head straight for the Minaret and Mosque and get eyes north. They can look up that little ditch there <laughs> and yeah, generally hunter. towards common. So they're going to be kind of the eyes and ears that fills the gap between our northern and southern units. Um, in theory, if all goes well, we'll hit them up the butt with 18 people before they even know they're there. But of course, no plan hey. survives for his contact, so we'll, we'll plan as we get. Um, if I go down, the chain of command is the scout sniper squad, uh, pure paradise two the, with the QRF six with the distraction force and, and two and one. Um, oh yes. Sorry. The QRF is going to be stationed somewhere around that friendly far of marker Northeast of police station. If however, a big yes, the squad takes contact sooner, they'll be positioned farther back. Um, the idea is that the insurgents try to use um vehicles to flank around behind us and get to checkpoint before we do once we get the hostage they'll be able to cut them off be in a position to get to any of the roadways quickly and also support the yes squad if needed if things go poorly are there any questions i think i covered everything do we have to worry about the action uh yeah so we're gonna be once we get him we're kind of just gonna be doing like a covering retreat all the way to checkpoint and then we're just gonna hold him out there yeah, if we take so we're them not... perfectly by surprise, the idea is that all 18 of those assault section will be able to hit them from behind and relieve Big Yes's squad. If that goes as planned, then we'll just exfiltrate those guys direct north through where Big Yes's element is. If not, we'll get them out somewhere farther south based on intel from the scout sniper team. Now, uh, I have a question. Shoot. 
let's say we don't come up behind them and they know exactly where we are because they can get to any part of the map faster than we can. And they've also got binox for each squad that they do. Um, yep. How then we do the 30 versus 19 firefight and hope we win mm -hmm. in a 30 versus 19. <laughs> and are we going <laughs> to leave We have GLs the... and... Are we not going to leave anybody at the exfil point to make sure I, that it they specifically don't says in the glo I yeah, specifically the said that they cannot camp the exfil point. It's in right, the dark. And, uh, do... So do they have to six... next to the hyper? No, they can spread out. Yeah, no. we, we have to physically touch Hyper Evo, who is the hostage. They, can we touch they with theoretically the have to... <laughs> What's the, the, like, the same yeah. checkpoint? As I... What's, the, uh, what's the pacing of squad six? Because we're obviously going to get there first if we just go straight to the point. Yep. Ideally, if you can get to those heights before they are, they do, then great. But I don't want y'all risking it. Make sure you keep eyes go nice and go as slow as you need to go. You got your idea is to just be the first to engage and hold them off long enough for the rest of the guys to flank around. The two squads in the south are going to be moving as fast as possible. You move as slow as you need to. Gotcha. Uh, question here. Can insurgents only spawn or start at one hostage area or in all yes. three hostage areas? They have, to start, they have to start at the same hostage location. Copy. Any other questions? Let's uh, kick some ass, boys. Right. All right, we are Squire back. Just got done listening to the U.S. brief there. Pretty interesting stuff, and we actually got a live time. We are live at 1.22, so let's see how long that is. Just about 50 seconds. So that's about all we have until we get started, though. Pretty exciting. So before we get started here, obviously we've got myself and Agalok flying around in the air up here giving you the overheads. But we have a lot of boots on the ground, and those guys are the ones that are going to be bringing you those first-person cameras, making sure that they look really awesome and making sure that you have something really cool to look at while the action's getting intense. So let's go ahead and give them a little thanks and give them a little screen time just to say thanks to them. First up, we've got the, the Silver Man. Next, we got Jay Remick. Got. We've got It's Crispy. We've got Server Air 404. Shadowed Ritual. We've Just, you know, We've got Big Yes out here. We've got Han Solo. All right, I want to see five X bit each person in the squad. The Muff Bandit, one of my commentary buddies, but also an awesome guy. We've got Merrick three six two. Watch your speed. And it looks like, last but not least, command for the staff side, Barton. Going to be running those throughout the night. If you keep your eyes on the top right-hand corner of your screen, you can see who you're watching at that time and what side they're actually playing for by the flags under their name. And you can get an idea of what's going on that way. Anytime you're seeing CMYK matter, you can know that the INS are going to be blue on my screen, and anytime you see an Agalock, you can know that the US will be blue. So things will switch around that way. We wish we could keep the colors synced for you, but no real way to do that yet. We'll, we'll work on it eventually. I'm sure that's going to be a thing eventually. But So that's what you're seeing. If you're on me, the INS are going to be blue. The US are going to be red. If you're watching Agalock, it's going to be reversed. Well, it seems like the U.S. is splitting up into three different groups, uh, two of them being made up of four or five men, and the rest of the team moving far south. Uh, now, it looks like they want to do kind of a hook around the back end of the hostage, 
up in the north there. Yeah, but, they don't uh, know where the the hostage is, right? No, they they uh they do know where it is just because they could. Oh, like, that's they right. See hyper on they the can map. see hyper on the map. I forgot about that. Yeah. So that's, I think that was part of the reason Jack included in uh there being an extra life for the insurgents. Yeah, that makes it's sense. It's kind of a counterbalance. That makes sense. They will know exactly where he is. Yeah, that's cool, though, that they're pushing out like that. Maybe they'll get, like, a good hook on. We'll see how they do. I'm so excited to kill and it looks like over on my side, they've got Hyper Evo. They, they gave him a nice bed. They gave him a nice bed with a little nightstand and a bowl. And I assume that that bowl is full of Skittles. Uh, he's just he's has some Skittles there for himself. And he's looking out the window longingly thinking about the regs coming and rescuing him while the horrible staff are, are holding him hostage here in this building. So if we pan ourselves out here a little bit, we can see Hyper Evo stuck in that building. He's the hostage. He's the hostage. And for now, he can't pull out his weapon. The only time he can pull out his weapon is once his buddies make it to him and actually touch him. So once they, they touch him, they are able to go ahead and have him pull out his rifle. I am concerned, though. I mean, they know where Hi they know where Hyper is, but what if they kill him with a grenade accidentally? <laughs> this? How much faith do you think Hyper has the in the regulars to save his ass? You know, that's the thing. Hyper... Oh, my he, God. The regulars, it's not like the regulars are nobodies to us. These are the guys that are in there day in, day out. These are the guys that are in the server squad leading or participating. They're the ones who are in operations oh, there participating. No, no, the they get opportunities to be squad leads, opportunities to play in NAS on Sundays as well as CCFN. So it's not like these guys are strangers to the community. I feel like Hyper could probably have a, a good bit of faith in them but now we've sounds some... like we might have some contact there yeah it looks like the uss sniper squad made up of pure paradise and part-time ninja playing the marksman just walked just by karmakot sitting in that mosque tower oh wow um, that minaret he's just holding out in there oh yeah and u.s command is very close by as well it seemed like karma didn't want to engage them um we'll see here though as command gets closer to karma He's probably trying to get an early scouting routine. I just heard some call outs on INS side that they were saying that there are guys moving around to their south. They basically, I feel like they're using Karma as kind of an advanced scout. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm surprised that Pure Paradise and Part Time Ninja didn't attempt to go up into the tower to try to get eyes on. Yeah, especially with a marksman, you have to know that you have better range than anybody on the map, right? So, you would think maybe send your marksman up there, but it doesn't seem like it. Well, they got very lucky they didn't. Yeah. Some purple tidbits asking why a reg wasn't the hostage. Well, Jack, we actually talked to him a little bit earlier before the, the stream was going, and his idea for having Hyper Evo be the one that is the hostage was that hyper evo is our community manager for squad ups so therefore he's kind of this overseer voice of the regulars and voice of the community so they wanted to kind of save him as a little bit of a, a thank you you know he's the one that they they get to bring in and and save him so that's how they wanted to set this up they thought it would be fun to kind of save the community yeah. manager from all the horrible staff holding him up. <laughs> so what's it looking like for the U.S.? They're, they're kind of fanning out here. I see, see a whole lot of guys moving in various different directions. Are they looking to kind of... Are they trying to kind of get us around here? Yeah, it seems most of the team, uh, full two squads, are moving all the way south. Um, well, command... Snipers are going straight through the center there. Very cool. So it seems um, like they've got two small teams pushing straight up center. Yeah. It, yeah, we've got the sniper team over here with uh, command. And you've got uh, Hitchens, Turtle Guy, Mune, and Silas right there in the center. And then you've got uh, your smaller squad up north as well. 
They're certainly covering their bases. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to get a very big surround on right now. So you can see on the map here, we've got squad six over to the west, squad two down to the south, four and five pushing up the middle here, one and three on the east. And it looks like they're trying to get a good surround on. We'll see how that goes. Dr. Amid asking, why can't medics revive fallen members? Well, in a one life operation, we try to keep it to have a little bit of immersion. And a little bit of that immersion is that if you get shot in the head and you're down on the ground, it's hard to be revived from a shot in the head. So we like to keep a little bit of intensity, a little bit of realism. You know that one stray bullet is going to do you in. So that's why we try to do that. Hopefully I answered your question. As far as the, the INS, it looks like they've spread themselves out. Shattered Ritual you're seeing on your screen now. Just kind of holding Hyper Evo hostage. He's keeping that, that gun barrel close to him. I heard to him remarking or heard him remarking earlier, you know, I might just use him as a bipod if need be. <laughs> I love it. He just rest the rest the barrel on his shoulder and fire out that way. <laughs> yeah, so looks like the INS though, they've kind of spread themselves out, the INS being the staff, and Jay Remick here holding this western flank. He might get view on Eliander coming up here soon. You can see him laying in that bush there on your screen, looking down this riverway, little drainage ditch or whatever this is, trying to get some eyes. He might see them here shortly, but with this haze tonight, geez, it looks like a sandstorm rolled through earlier today. Man. They're getting close, though. They're getting close. They have to know that contact's going to be coming in soon. I just heard a call out, Dr. Kamikaze, saying that they've got a sniper team just east of Karma Cut. So he knows that they're there. Karma Cut, that advanced scout, pushing out here, getting close to him. He wants to keep some eyes on him. That's part time Ninja Turtle and SM Pure Paradise. I feel like. Oh, Karma SM got a one tap on SM Pure Paradise. Oh, wow. <laughs> What a one tap by our fearless leader Karma Cut. Great job. Great job by Karma Cut. Karma oh, moving time. away. Just absolutely freaking out. <laughs> he just that that one tap, he didn't know where it came from. It was just back. But they still have the marksman. Part-time Ninja Turtle was the marksman. So he took out one. He took out his spotter. I feel like he was that was kind of acting as his spotter and protector. Karma Cut here now just holding in this bush while part-time Ninja Turtle's moving around. Depending on which way part-time goes, he could run right into him. We'll see what happens here. Oh, this is very close. Very close. They're pulling through this compound. If he moves out on the north side of this compound, he's going to run into Karma Cut. Oh, we've got some shots coming out east as well. I, I kind of want to hang out here, see what happens to their marksman. All right, get back up here, cover this action. Oh, this is close. Oh, Karma's coming around the corner. Oh, and part time takes out Karma. Oh, no. Karma oh, was looking the wow. other way. Absolutely surprising. Oh, that's unfortunate. That was intense, but good on part time. <laughs> All right. Nacho here. Hanging out. Looks like just to his north, Jay Remick was holding that that little river there, and he ended up going down, unfortunately. Nacho just holding this ditch. It looks like he hit, did take a little bit of contact, so he's kind of hiding now. We've got contact pushing in east as well. Pugachev and the Muff Bandit hanging out on this east side. You've got... You can see Muff Bandit laying down in this field. It looks like he's got an AR. Yes, he does. And he's getting ready to fire that thing out. We'll see what happens. See if he can get any eyes. That'd be good contact if he can. Truth Realm peeking around this corner just to the southeast of Pugachev. He might even... No, I don't think Truth Realm sees him. Oh, shot's going oh. in on Truth Realm. That was from Lil' Jin.
little Jen just kind of holding this position here. Put some shots in at Truth Realm. We'll see what's going to happen. It's it's getting tense. This is the this is when it gets real close. Ooh, U.S. Command down. Truth Realm takes some shots from Jen. Oh wow, that's unfortunate for him. Yeah, he was he was Absolutely. close, very close, all by himself. Not sure what he was wanting to accomplish there, but he he kind of poked himself out and just got tapped. That's unfortunate for him. All right, here comes in that... some close contact though. Or, I believe or, the regulars sorry, can pull feel, through. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. They they still got some some good. Dead. They've still got a good arc. You can see Muff Bandit on your screen laying out there. Got some scouts putting in some fire right now. Oh, look at all these people. Look at all the regs crawling through the, the grass up there to the north. Got Silverman on tap. It's Crispy, Fun Guy, Demine, Zabari, all of them just crawling through these fields. Jaffe is holding that angle, though. So we'll see how that works out for him. Jaffe, if he were to push up on the swell, he might be able to see him. Oh, shots come in on Jaffe. He lays down. Jaffe trying to hide behind this tractor. He's taking some AR fire. He pulls back. He's going to be all right for now. Certainly going to be an interesting set of uh, conflicts coming up. Carpy takes some shots out here on the west. Nacho putting some shots in at him. Creeping in Nacho now using this ditch as defilade to pull back oh man good stuff for now they're getting close over here on this west side how's it going over on the east are they pushing in yet absolutely we've got teams pushing up down the road there we've got teams crawling through this field it's it's a very coordinated attack the regulars definitely know what they're doing Roger. That's good to see, you know. It's good to see because, you know, they were having a little bit of issue getting set up earlier, I know. So for them to then get an organized strategy, and even if they lost their command, it seems like they are keeping that strategy together going forward. That speaks to a good, simple plan. Absolutely. That's what Currently, you need, they're honestly. smoking out the uh, fields from their compound. It seems it's going to block Pugachev and Muff Bandit's view very well. That's what you want to do if you're trying to push across to open fields. Absolutely. I think that that's why the INS kind of chose this position here. They expected that, well, we've got hard cover, and all they've got are fields to push through. So it looks Absolutely. like that's kind of what their thought process was. Who's across the street from us? Absolutely, and this compound's perfect. It's all risen up. Mm -hmm. There's fields just outside it. It's perfect. The compound itself, you know, I'm reminded of an operation we had not too long ago on this map. I believe it was either Neighborhood Watch or I can't remember the other one. We have another operation on Samari. But there was a moment where they were holding out in this exact compound on this north side. Just 11 of them held out in this compound. And they ended up IEDing the last three guys to death. I, I would love to see a replay of something like that. We'll see how that goes, though. So Muff's still looking out in that field. Just kind of keeping himself. Not trying to be exposed too much. Let's see. It seems like there's there's... Couple US pushing in. What do you got, Aglog? Give Ooh. us a sit rep on what's going on. Well, that entire squad with Wantap and Fun Guy just pushed up to the border, took out Pugachev, put a hurtin' on Jaffe. A couple of other members on the southern side pushing through that beautiful assortment of red, white, and blue smoke. Oh, this an IED got the, touched off. Certainly the apex of conflict right here. Grenades going off in both directions. Yeah, we'll see. They're pushing up through here. Shots coming in. Muff Bandit has somebody to his east. That's Kahuna. Just holding there. Little Jin takes a shot. He lays down. Bleeding currently. 
One tap pushing one up tap right pushing by up. Nacho. Yep, getting real close yep. here. Crispy and Cool Breeze pushing through now. Little Jin goes down. That the conflict's the getting real close. Absolutely, but I believe there is another IED somewhere in this compound, correct? South side, we've got Jack Reynolds and his crew gaming Brennan, Mori eats kids, Han Von Solo, Han Solo, pushing up here. They're getting real close. South side, also part time Ninja Turtle, very close. That's the marksman. Why is the marksman that close? We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Let's take a look at part time. Muff Bandit yeah, goes down on the now. northeast. Yeah. Oh, no, Muff. They're getting real close here. Nacho takes down the Silver Man. He's still holding this angle. Let's see if he can get any more. They're probably going to grenade that. Yeah, they're getting ready to chuck a grenade in there. Kahuna tossing a nade in there. He fails it. He failed it. Ooh. Oh. Kahuna takes some damage. Nacho oh, Silver Man was still up. He takes down oh. Silver Man now. Now Silver Man's dead. He got Cool Breeze the first time around. Kahuna went down as well. The U.S. Not having sure. a hard time breaching this. Kirkley Not has sure a guy right... Down. Yep. Kirkley has a guy right beside his... Oh, man. He has a guy right beside his uh, container here. He puts out some shots. They know he's there. He's shooting at Han Solo. They're firing back at him. It's getting real intense. Here comes the push. Fill in the blank, an ex prisoner right next to him. They have to know. Kirkley lays out some shots through the wall, hoping to get somebody. Oh, man, this is getting so intense. Fun guy pushes in. Kirkley took down three there. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Wow. They have to know that they have to breach this compound, but it's going to be a real tough time. They've still got all these guys coming in from the south. Kirkley finally goes down, and pretty much we've just got these guys now up here on the north side. Demine takes a shot. Barton and Hamley. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Getting a little bit of getting a little bit of audio issues, but that's that's probably my fault. I'm working on it. Just these last few brave INS here left to defend Hyper. Crazy calling out Eastern Door, Eastern Door. Call guys pushing in now. Gaming Brennan laying down shots close. Crazy Russian just reloading, calling things out. Oh man, this is getting intense. They know that they're they only have these guys. Now the problem for the regs, they lost a lot of guys on this initial push. So whenever the INS gets a revive here and try to push back, that's going to be a good pro or that's going to be a problem. Absolutely. Let's go. Is Hyper allowed They're... to call out Fatal Donuts? No, he is not. Oh, there goes the push. U.S.'s push is not going well. They've lost Carpy a and Big Yes. Yep. Smoke coming in. Crazy Russian. Server Air 404 right on the other side of the wall from each other. On Solo down as well. Oh. This push is having a hard time. Absolutely. Even if they make it through this, they won't be able to exfil properly. Yeah, it's just go somewhere else. They've lost so much. Oh my god! Oh, creeping goes down. Creeping goes down. So just five ins here left holding out. Doctor Kamikaze, Barton, Shadowed Ritual, Hamlet, Crazy Russian, still alive on the ins.
They're getting real close. Right, Russian just go. trying to hold this side. Eastern door. I'm not worth it. Crazy Russian takes down one, gets a shot. Hyper Evo just holding in that window there. They're using them as almost a meat shield, it feels like. Oh, can I, can I talk <laughs> a little right by them? Yeah, you can. It's a dirty right. time. Uh, I got one right fucking next to me, and I got two laying down. They're using me. them as a meat shield. That's so dirty. Be careful, Lance. Be careful. Be careful. Somebody actually hurt Hyper Evo there. I'm not sure who killed him. Or not killed him. Hurt him. Hurt him. Hurt him. He's still alive. More pushing in and going down this this compound. I think I got him. I Russian taking out more on the east side. This is just so hard to push through. I cannot believe how hard this is. <laughs> Someone hit Hyper. Eastern door again. More coming in the eastern door now. Looks like Jack Reynolds, server 404. It's crispy. Lance Reynolds, Aubrey pushing up. Wall, Shots right? coming in both ways. We'll see what's going to happen. This is real intense. <laughs> Fatal Donut saying, Hyper is like, stop coming this way. Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. He's like, look around at the door, so don't even preak the door. Certainly oh, a complex, yeah, very complex compound to try to take. ID Another ID goes off. off. Do not believe it took out anybody on the U.S. side. Wow. Smoking it up. If you can toss the fucking smoke right in front of that entrance to cover the fucking doorway, you'd be good. Here comes, it's Crispy and Zabari pushing in on the east side. Uh, they they kind of peek and then step back. They're a little scared of it. They peek and then step back. Yeah, finally the smoke coming out. Russian changes his angle, takes down its crispy. Oh, that's it. He goes down for that. Zabari and Lance Aubrey now behind him. Wow. Yeah, these smokes now finally coming in. Go ahead, sorry about that. And of course the U.S. can't nade into that room without risking their hostages. Crazy Russian goes down. That's one of them down. That was the guy watching the east entrance, so they might be able to push in now. Shadowed Ritual. Dr. Kamikaze. Hamlet still up. Hamlet takes down server 404 pushing in. Zabari and Lance Aubrey on the east trying to push in now. Let's see what they can do here. Close night there. <laughs> Zoko, yeah. He was literally using Hyper as a bipod. That's basically what he's been doing. <laughs> Hamley's just using them as a bipod. Hey, he's got two legs, right? You know, that's a bipod, technically. Hamley just holding down that western door there. They're getting a breach on, though. Brisinger, Lance Aubrey, Zabari, Eliander have now made it in. Let's yeah, see if we can get in here close. Dr. Kamikaze holding the door. Barton watching the other side of the door. Hamlet just holding that corner. Using using Hyper Evo as a bipod. Room, you will not kill me. Getting real close to the end here. I'm in the other section of the room. Brisinger. Brisinger just trying to push there, but then pulls back. Lance Aubrey pulls back. How many minutes left? Now, one thing to remember here, the U.S. get no respawns, but the INS do. So, whoever they can, they can live here. Oh, they put in a nade. Oh. Took down Dr. Kamikaze. Barton's still alive. Right below me.
You guys good? He's just hanging out in this corner. Up. You still up, Kami? Jaffe? Mm -hmm. Kamikaze down now. Okay. Hamley and Barton, the only two left. Can see them through the windows. Just, just stay duck down. Uh, well, stay, stay lay down, lay down. Hyper moving around there. You're good, you're good. Barton's calling it out. Oh, Jack Reynolds goes down. Hamley. Brisinger pushes the corner and kills Barton. Oh. Hamley takes Barton. down Brisinger with a pistol. That was with his pistol. <laughs> no. Zabari and Lance Aubrey, the only two U.S. left, right? Oh, and down Hamley he goes. Down. And that's it. They'll be able to push in now and get Hyper Evo. I don't believe they realize he's dead. They don't yet, but they'll realize it soon. Wait, they gotta push in. The windows count? Okay, Sabari, you watch the main, you watch the door. Yeah, I'm gonna I try to so. take a look at the window here. I the right first because I think he's See if they the realize that everything's okay. Eliander, uh, Zabari, Lance Aubrey. Oh, they were keeping a few guys back. I didn't even notice. Silas, Turtle, Five Guy, Immune Style. Oh, Hyper Evo is free. He gets his weapon back. Right. And now he can move with them, no, and they'll move to you. extract. Hyper Evo rejoining with his guys. Happy to see him. But I missed him on the outer. Happy to see him. Spread out, spread out. Hyper for the high value thing you guys got. How many are we? Now, the objective shifts a little bit. Hyper Evo has now been rescued. So the next step is that the INS, being the staff right now, get to respawn, and they need to push on the Xville location that the U.S. are currently moving Hyper Evo to in the southwest. And they're down to quite a, quite a limited number of guys, as I recall. How many do you count over there, Agalok? I'm counting seven with this group now. I haven't been able to check the rest of the map to see if there's any strike. In the yeah. INS over here. Mounted up. Getting ready. They got their Dishkatekis. They got their SPGs. Yeah, let me know when you want me to pop. They're getting bikes. They are getting everything that they possibly can. And they are going to start pushing out. Oh, look at this INS team lining up. They they want revenge now. They lost their, they lost their hostage. And they're going to push out. Russian. I think he's sitting in the passenger seat there, if I'm not mistaken. Riding in that discotheque. All right. Looks like they're holding at this position here until they're allowed to move. Well, they seem to have split up, but they all seem to be running to the same location. They are uh, certainly freaking out a little bit in local, trying to get as organized as possible. They know what's coming. Mm -hmm. They know how how hard that assault on that compound was and how difficult it's going to be to protect Hyper for the remainder of the event. So it looks like INS moved out a little early. They, they ran out a little early. They were supposed to wait a little bit of time. That was in the op doc. And we didn't exactly cover that, so they do have a little bit of time that they have to wait. So it looks like they are moving back to Maine, getting themselves ready. Yeah, they have to wait three minutes. That basically gives the U.S. a chance to get to their location, get set up, and then they'll be able to push out. So a little bit of confusion there, but we've got it organized now. Looks like they're about ready. We'll see how well, it goes. Looks like the U.S. is splitting up into two different groups. Um, this other group without Hyper looks like it's going to be watching the southern bridge, trying to ambush whatever INS sends this way. Google Tracks asking how the staff is doing. The staff have actually managed to down everybody except for seven of the U.S., and they just got their respawn. So they did lose Hyper Evo, but they took down... All but seven. So the counter push is going to get on now. 
We'll see how it goes. I us move through that ambush. They All right. Some Here it goes. Doesn't seem to be any serious losses. Oh. They're pushing through. Hamley, Jay Remick shoving in on this techie. Gorgeous GO, it looks like, took out that logistical strike. Shots go in, Jay Remick goes down. IED blows up. <laughs> you know what? That was a V bid. They V bid at that vehicle. Oh, Muff Bandit! Creeping go down. Silas immune and turtle oh, no, looking to pull out. Certainly a heavy engagement. You know this, this little, this little ambush is looking pretty effective so far. They've taken down a number of the staff as they were trying to push back in. Dishkateki now opening up. Crazy Russian in the neural shadowed, laying in some fire, but Silas in immune style returning some. Karma cut on the flank. What's he doing? Looks like he's going to push up on the southern side. That was a great ambush. Really good setup. Really good job from the regulars. I love to see it. Good strategic. And now Immune Style and Silas are pulling back before they get flanked. Smart stuff. Karma Cut still pushing here. Absolutely. Are you aware of how many the staff lost in that ambush? Whew, uh, it would be hard to tell right now. Karma Cut just saw him running through that field, though, and he stops and pulls back. Says, nope. I'm going to hold up here for a moment. So the grenade from Karma Cut goes out. Lands right beside Silas, but he lives. Immune Style still there. Immune Style gets shot once by Karma Cut. Turtle 5 guy pulling back to his north. And they're trying to get back. The hostage hyper evo is secure in the extract. But it does seem like staff's pushing up it's from another direction. Kirkley and Dr. Kamikaze just down the road from hyper. Yeah, crazy Russian, the neural Jaffe, and Barton pushing on the north. Karma Cut still holding on the south here. You can see Karma Cut here just kind of holding. He knows that he got a shot on him, but now he's going to try to start actually moving up. He's going to push through this building, see if we can... Oh, Dr. Kamikaze is getting real close to Immune Style and Silas. Kirkley as well. The staff, the staff are getting in there real close. Dr. Kamikaze goes down. Got a scout vehicle pulling up on the uh, hostage. It did take a lat hit. Didn't seem to kill any of the U.S. They get out of that scout car, though. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's fun how these this op allows them to kind of reverse, you know? Like, originally the INS were the defenders, and now they're the attackers. Absolutely. But with much more pressure on the U.S. this time. Less time to prepare. <laughs> oh, no. Hyper Evo, the hostage. <laughs> Having a bad day. Stuck in a wall, actually, it seems like. <laughs> Ooh, stuck into the floor. Ooh, certainly a uh, unsavory situation. So Karma Cut did go down on the south here. He got taken out by Immune Style. Shadowed Ritual, Creeping, The Neural, Nacho, Hamlet. All kind of pushing through these buildings here. They've got Turtle oh. 5 guy just to their east. Lance Aubrey protecting the north there, taking down Kirkley. It's actually uh, looking pretty well for the U.S. Yeah, the U.S. doing really good. Still have, still have Jeffy just nearby. It's amazing that the U.S. have done so much work. That good ambush, it seemed like the... INS were prepared to just shove right back in. Creeping goes down. Oh. The INS were just prepared to shove right back in. Staff thought that they wouldn't be set up. 
but that ambush takes out a lot, and so far they're having a hard time pushing through. I imagine they thought that the regs were just going to kind of hold that exfil point, but they've got some outlier forces. I said at the start, and I said after commandment down, these guys, they don't need a plan. <laughs> they just operate, right? Absolutely. Moose asking anyone know how long they have to hold. They have to hold till the last man. We're gonna we're gonna run it down to the last man. There might have been a time limit listed. We're we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go down to the last man. <laughs> Jaffe, Jaffe taking some shots at Hyper Evo and Barton. Zabari. Barton, Barton takes down Lance Aubrey. He's in there. Let's see what he does. Piper's still stuck in the wall. He can't help. Dang. Barton hanging out up here, trying to get some eyes in. Barton hops up on those Hescos, taking a look around. He's calling in where they are. There's a two-story says they're in it. Let's Jaffe know. And he's pushing up now. Jaffe saying they're going to smoke and push on the north. Look at all those smokes coming out. It's raining in. Smoke after smoke after smoke after smoke. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, Hyper holding in that corner there is going to be okay. All that smoke. Immune, Silas, and Turtle Guy are pulling back to the compound now. Hopefully they'll get there in time. Yeah, there's three coming in. That could be a good flanking for us. Hamleet sees them, though. Put some shots in them. Shadowed Ritual takes down Immune Style. Pushing in. Nacho goes down. Neural fires back. Takes down Zabari. They're fragging the room. All right, they're about to push the stairs. Getting... Get some of these fireflies out of the way for you. There's a smoke in these stairs right now. I'm right behind you. This is real tense. They're pushing in on this building. Oh, it goes down trying to make the push up the stairs. Second floor is going to be real hard for them to breach. Hyper Evo goes down. There's the hostage down. So they're just going to have to push these stairs. They're going to toss the nade up. They put a grenade in. The grenade was good, but he's still on the corner. They push in. Two go down. Yes, he is. All right, they're getting ready to make this push. Crazy Russian, he's got a grenade in his hand. Puts it up there. Won't help much at that angle, though. Another, Another one. grenade goes in and down. he goes down. Unfortunate for him. This push. They just held this angle really well. Certainly in an intense wow. set of Shattered affairs. Ritual goes down as well. Man, they just, they just held this angle. Eliander holding everything. Now it's down to two INS, if I'm correct, right? Oh my god. Keep an eye on that thing. Yeah, they know they're gonna try and harm the uh, top floor of this building. Yeah, we scooped him off with a geo. Nice. Sounded like we may have lost matter there. Yeah, it seems to crash. Um, looking like Eliander's holding the staircase pretty thoroughly. Um, got sightless and turtle guy in the background there, out in the fields. And we do not have very many INS left. It looks like Muff Bandit's out in the distance. Hamleet's here close, but I don't think it's going to be enough. 
honestly, Eliander's a uh, Eliander's in a very defensible position. Uh, keep in mind, though, the hostage hyper has died. Uh, turtle guy goes down. Hamlet takes him out. Seemed like he knew exactly where he was. I love this play out for y'all. Hamley taking down Silas, three quick shots. Hamley pushing away from that compound. Ooh, one minute. Oh, got Karma giving a one minute warning. Hamley definitely pushing back towards that compound. I would hope he would uh, know there's still somebody up there seeing the pile of bodies at the bottom of the stairs. There you go. Eliander takes down Hamley. Yeah, Ellie. Yeah, Ellie. Yeah, Ellie. Why Ellie? That's like their 15th. It's fun, so. That's official. GG. GG. Good game. Hyper went down, but the regs did survive to the end. By the way, we will not. Wow, that got pretty intense at the end there. We're going to win again, and we're going to do it right. Great job, everyone. Great All right. Job. Looks like we're going to switch turtle. sides, and we are going to do this yeah, thing over turtle, again. Ideal. So <laughs> if we take a little break here, get ourselves a drink, a get a bathroom Catch break, they're going to get set up, do it all over again, flip sides, and we'll see how it goes in round two.